So this video is for a Tesla owner. Perhaps you're new to Tesla, but one of the features you do not want to give up, and that is the Sentry Cam and your Dash Cam. The Dash Cam is part of the car. It runs every minute you're running the car. It will record events around your car. Should someone be doing something near your car, it will start a recording and it has to then save that recording onto digital memory. And that's what we're here to talk about. The car comes with these features in form of camera in the front, on the sides, and in the back, and it's all recording. However, all that information must be stored somewhere. And that's where the internal memory that you add to your Tesla comes in. It has a USB connector built into your Tesla. However, you got to be a little bit more selective about what kind of digital media you plug into it. And I'll explain why. The media is the USB device that you use to plug into the car. Now, with most USB sticks, most likely you have a bunch of them. The USB sticks that you buy for eight or ten dollars, maybe four or five dollars, will store information no problem. But they fail when they're continually written to. And in a dash cam environment such as in your Tesla, you'll need a more robust digital media where the car can write to it on a continuous basis and it does not damage the device. For example, I installed a low-cost USB device in my initial Tesla once Sentry Cam and the Dash Cam became available. After I did it, maybe three weeks or so, it had a failure. It turns out there is a maximum number of writes you can do to a digital media unless the device, the USB stick, is specifically designed for many, many writes. And that's where a good quality memory device is needed inside your Tesla. So what I use is I use what's called a solid state disk drive or SSD. The SSD is a USB device. You can buy a number of them, but you need to make sure your device is fast enough to be able to deal with the speed at which the car can write the data in this case, video, to the device. I've chosen, after checking around on my decision, I've chosen the Samsung T5. That's Tango 5. However, recently Samsung has upgraded the T5 to what they're now calling the T7. The T7 is, uh, I think, the same size, but we're going to open one. I bought one off of Amazon. It's here. It runs about $90, and you can still buy T5s, but I don't believe that they're made anymore, but they're more expensive. This one is 500 gigabytes. And yes, you do need a large enough one because what happens is the dash cam and the sentry mode will write data, in this case video, to this SSD. And it writes it until it gets to the end and then starts erasing the old and writes over that. So you need your digital media to be large enough to take a month or two or more of actual recorded data. Should you decide you had some damage to the car or something happened and you really want to go back and see, the larger that memory device is, the further back in time you'll be able to go. So let's unbox this T7 and let's see if we can get it operational here in the car. So the first thing you want to do, I currently have my T5 installed here in my Model Y. But you notice up here, this is the dash cam icon. You notice it's red. So you notice the red dot. That means it's recording. It's recording as we speak, as we're sitting here in the car. So you don't want to just jerk it out in case it's in the middle of a write. So what you're supposed to do is press the icon and hold it and you'll notice that the red dot went off. 
The red dot, just like any digital or camera recording, indicates that it's recording. So with the red dot off now, I can go ahead and remove my T5, and we're going to go ahead and install this T7 in here, and we're going to see if we can get it formatted. So this is a T7. Amazon has them. I think they're $79, uh, rounds it up right at $80. And let's uh, go ahead and do this. I'm going to try to do this with one hand. It may be the wrong thing to do, but it's okay. I think I can probably get into it. All right, let's uh, see if we can get this out of here. Okay, nice little packaging. Let's open the front, and there it is. T7. Now, even though this is a solid-state disk drive, which means that there's no moving parts in it. It's all electronic flash memory. And it is designed to act just like a hard drive. This one has a USB-C on the front, has a small little LED here for activity. And then with the SSD, if I can get in the bottom of it here, not sure how you do it. Hmm, it's a secret vault. Holy mackerel, what the heck? I hate ripping it, but I'm gonna rip it. Okay, there's probably some cool way to get in it without ripping it open, but I'm not sure how. Okay, so inside, we just have a, a box here. Inside is uh, this cutesy little box, and in this box, we're gonna find all the available cables that come with the T7. The T7 is a USB-C, and it comes uh, with the box and the manual and then two cables. Now this is a USB-C, USB-C, and this is a USB-A, USB-C. So in my car, I actually have the new Jetta port expander. So this is the Jetta Model 3Y port expander, and it plugs into the two USB ports in the car. It breaks it out to a USB-A and a couple USB-Cs. This cable here is a USB-C. It powers the wireless charger that comes in the Model Y. Get that out of the way for now. T5 is here, and uh, it comes with this little short jumper in the Jetta. And uh, so here is the T5, set that down here. And then here is the T7. Okay, so flash. The T7 is just about a quarter of an inch, maybe a centimeter longer. It's slightly thinner and it is the same width. So here is where you wanna go. Go ahead and do a Google search for FAT32 format GUI, and it'll take you to this page. You download this formatter, and this is the one that I used. Now, if you're not a computer person, you might get the help of a computer person to make this happen. Once this application is downloaded, you need to install it onto your PC and then run it. You may need to get some help for that too, but give it a whirl. Now I have no warranty on this program. All I can say is it worked for me. I was able to download it and make it work. Let's see what the application looks like when we run it. I've plugged in the T7 and I go down here to F5 and it says it's currently 500 gig X fat and it's the model T7, so that is correct one. I come down here and I'm going to uh, rewrite this. Okay, so we've labeled it Tesla Cam. So let's verify that we're on the proper device, 500 gig XFAT, and we're set up uh, for format, and uh, I think we're ready to go. So let's hit start, and you get a pop-up here and the pop says, do you really want to format F? Now remember, F is the 500 gig XFAT T7, and of course, yes. 
I'll click yes. It does a format. There you go, it says it's done. Initializing reserve sectors and fats. Anyway, we're ready to go now. And if we look up here, guess what? We're 500 gig FAT32 and we've labeled it Tesla Cam. All right, so I think we're ready to go. After the T7 is initialized with the proper formatting for the sector size, we now need to create a folder, which we're going to do here. We're going to type in the word capital T-E-S-L-A capital C-A-M. This is a folder that must be on the root directory of the Tesla Cam T7, and the car will recognize it. So let's go plug it in the car and see what happens. Let's have a look now at our T7. We have formatted it to FAT32. We're gonna plug it into an available USB. If we look up here, we should see the dash cam appear and like that. So last but not least, you see the record button is actually off on the dash cam icon. The dash cam, of course, will record any movement in or around your car when you're driving it and the sentry cam will record anything if you're not in it and it's just not driving. To activate it, let's say I think you have to press and hold it, and then we go to record mode. So remember, when you remove the SSD, you don't just want to unplug it in case it's writing. The thing to do to turn it off is you press the icon here, and then that red button will go off and then it's safe to unplug your SSD. So that's all it's to uh, the installation of the media to record the data. But let me put in the other SSD, my regular one, and I'll show you how the recordings work. Let's take a look at actually what we get to see with the dash cam. So once this icon is there, by tapping it once, we get the launch, the viewer here. So you have a couple choices here of what you want to see. In the all category, you get to see that all the recordings, both dash cams and sentry modes, are all there. In my recent video when I was in Brentwood, this is the Tesla store in Brentwood, Tennessee. You go back up here. If you want to look at just sentry, by tapping sentry, you will only see sentry triggers. And you can then index page after page of stuff that's been captured on your sentry mode. Wherever I've driven, you get to see that. If I want to see just the dash cam, this is only while I'm driving, you can then select that and it will show wherever I was driving and you can see Saratoga, as you know, I've been in there, Encampment, Breckenridge, Colorado, Cascade, Colorado, and so on and so forth. By having a large SSD to store all this possible data, you can review it at any time without having to make a decision or have it overwritten by having a smaller SSD. So those are our choices. We have dash cam, we have sentry footage, and all. Now, if you want to look at it, let's look at today's. Actually, let's look at the Brentwood one. Now, in the corner down here is the left side of the car. By tapping that, I actually can see the left side. I go over here, I can see the right side. I can see the rear, nice bushes. I can look at the front, which is the store. Hey, look at that guy. Anyway, as you can see, I get to see uh, any activity that goes on. But one of the things you'll notice is this red dot down here. That is the time of event. So if I move the timeline long over and we let it play from there, not sure how long this video is, get a little closer maybe. And as we take a look here, we will see something that the sentry mode triggered on. 
and it then will allow you to actually record what's going on. Oh, guess what? It's me. So right at the trigger point, it actually was me that tripped off the sentry cam. So this is how it works. It allows you to have the car watch and take care of everything around it. If someone comes near your car, messes around, of course you're going to see that. You'll have good HD quality video of it from the four directions. So this is the primary reason that and the actual dash cam here while you're driving because you just never know what kind of a knucklehead may be running you off the road or causing a car wreck in front of you or whatever it may be. In this case, we got a big old trucker passing us here. And I'm not sure that he's uh, too much in his lane, actually. Anyway, the dash cam captures everything. We have our side camera. As you can see, he's not really in his lane. I think that's probably what the cause was there. Over here, it looks on the right side. Of course, I got out of the way because I wasn't sure what he was doing. And then, of course, one in the front. And then uh, there's a rear camera, of course. So why do you need a good memory device for your car? You need to make sure it's reliable. You want to make sure that you record everything around you. And a good solid state disk drive will do that for you here in the Tesla. Don't be driving your car without this. It is excellent peace of mind. I hope this video helped you understand the importance of making sure that you have the proper dash cam recording media formatted and installed properly in your car. I can't stress enough that this is really important and with every Tesla having the ability of being able to record events in and around your car, you would be foolish not to put something like this in your car since all it takes is to format the device, install it and make it work. If you like this video and you want to buy yourself a Tesla and perhaps having a dash cam and sentry mode was the thing that made you decide you want to do that, then the referral link here shown at the bottom of the screen will allow you to take a thousand miles of free supercharging or 1500 kilometers when you order your car using this referral link here at the bottom of the screen. Thank you for watching. I'll look for you again and take care.